Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So I was just thinking back to when I first launched this channel uh, way back uh, nine years ago and it, it occurs to me that it's, it's been almost exactly nine years by give or take a day uh, since I launched the channel and um, I think I I may or may not have had a, a couple of videos before the the, the, the main thing that I was posting on here because uh, I think I did post an, uh, an intro and stuff like that but um, I mainly launched this channel because I wanted to do a countdown to my 40th birthday that was nine years ago I'm I, I, I am roughly like 39 or 40 days away right now from my 49th birthday um, and I am actually thinking I, I, I think back then I thought well you know maybe I'll do this again for my 50th birthday although um, whether or not I do a full countdown of 50 days uh, with recollections and memories of my uh, my my you know 50 some years of of life on this planet, um, or if I would just do the last 10 years, like from 50, from from 40 to 50, um, I haven't decided which way I'm going. I have a year yet to decide this. Um, although, you know, if, if you want comments below, I mean, you guys can just go and watch the old videos that have barely any views at all. I think I've, some videos have like 5 or 10 <laughs> views on them. Um, but I did do this countdown where, like, every day, so it was, like, 40 days before my birthday, and, um, and I, like, okay, well, I was born, you know, <laughs> um, or no, I think, because, yeah, because, I mean, I couldn't really, I didn't really have much of a, you know, like, I hadn't turned 40 yet, so it was, like, okay, so it's 39 days before my birthday, and here was, you know, memories from my 39th year, and then the next day, it's 38 days until my birthday, and here's memories from, you know, when I was 38 and, and so I kind of counted down so as I got closer to the birthday you know the younger I got um, until I was like you know around one or two days before um, the my birthday I really um, you know most of, of the things I, I, I talked about were not memories of mine as much as memories that had been shared with me by my family about when I was uh, a year or two old um, and so I just kind of, you know, uh, I thought that was a fun concept to do. It, it never took off. I never got a lot of views, but I got enough <clears throat> views at the time, um, to want me to keep going. Plus I had a lot of fun making the videos. Um, so that's why I just, you know, like, Hey, this is fun. I mean, I don't want to do this every single day. I didn't become a daily vlogger at that point. Um, but I, I did start doing weekly vlogs. Um, and I built up this channel and everything, uh, and I think, yeah, I built, I built up the channel to about 12 or 1300 followers, and then YouTube cut off my monetization because even though I had over a thousand followers, um, they, they changed the algorithm and stuff so that you have to have a certain amount of view time on your channel, or view, watch hours, watch, yeah, watch hours and watch minutes and that kind of thing, um, and I don't get enough watch time on my videos. Uh, it just, you know, I'm a middle-aged trans guy and, and how many people are going to watch, you know, someone like me. And at the time when I first launched my channel, I hadn't come out as trans yet, um, much less queer at all. And so I was just doing a lot of just kind of rambling on about my various opinions about different things. Uh, it's one of the reasons why this channel is called <laughs> Random Thoughts. Um, because it's, it, and it was my random thoughts on Thursdays because I posted a new video every Thursday originally. And then when I lost the monetization, it was like, well, screw that. <laughs> so now I just post videos whenever the heck I feel like it because, you know, why, why bother? Because there, uh, the, the requirement in terms of how much watch time I need versus how much watch time I get every year, um, it, it, I, I get, I have about like, I, I only get about 10% of what's required. <laughs> and the amount and level of effort it would take me to build this channel uh, into something where I could get enough followers and get enough view time and all this stuff. And it's just like, you know, 
Um, I just don't have the appeal, the mass appeal for YouTube. Um, younger people tend to, to have more mass appeal. And, uh, you know, like I'm not a beauty guru, I'm not a, a cooking guru or anything. I've done a couple of cooking videos and stuff, but those also take, you know, the, the, the amount of editing <laughs> that's required for those is just tremendous. And, you know, I mean, I, if I wanted to put the effort in, I could, but I've been uh, more into my writing and putting effort into my writing and that kind of thing. And so, I, you know, just a matter of priorities and stuff. So while I'm still doing this YouTube thing a little bit and I'm um, still enjoying it to a degree, um, I'm obviously not doing it um, on any kind of a regular basis. And I'm not building this channel to earn money from it anymore because uh, that ship has kind of sailed and I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm past that at this point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's just, it is what it is, and, you know, uh, but I do appreciate everyone who does watch my videos, and, and thank you for, you know, especially anyone who's been here for a long time and watching me, so thank you. Um, if you have any opinions uh, of, you know, should I redo all of my memories from age 49 down to age zero <laughs> as a countdown for my 50th birthday next year? Or should I just do, because I mean, you can always go watch the first 40 years <laughs> or first 39 years of my life from my, my first group of videos. I suppose I could always compile them together into a single massive video, but that's, well, like I said, that's a, it would be a single massive video because there's 40 of them times somewhere between 5 and 15 minutes each. Um, I think I tried to keep all, I think I, I kept most of them under 10 minutes. But still, it would be a it would be a long single video to watch, so um, I'm not sure what I want to do with that. But if you have any opinions as you're watching, you know, let me know. I'd appreciate that. Um, obviously, a lot has happened since I launched my channel. I mean, heck, nine years ago was let's see, it's 2020 now, so it's 2011. Um, I had moved in with my then boyfriend and later husband um, a couple years before. I moved in with him like 2009 and uh, we had just adopted our dog Joey, I had just gotten my, my car, my Subaru um, that I have and uh, yeah so, so things were a lot different back then. I was just turning 40 and uh, or yeah nine years ago so I was just turning 40 and then you know, just uh, a few weeks shy of turning 49 now. And sadly, I mean, if you follow my channel, you know that, that I lost Joey to cancer a year ago. Um, he was eight and a half. And um, he had uh, developed a, um, osteosarcoma on his skull. And we fought it for a year. Uh, I happened to live uh, in a place with a great vet hospital. Um, it was a, we have a, a university with a vet program and they have this great cancer center for, for animals. And uh, they did everything they could and they, they extended his life by a year humanely. Uh, he was not suffering. In fact, uh, with the radiation and chemotherapy treatment that he had been getting, um, it actually made his, his tumor on his head um, act, practically disappear. Um, they shrunk it down to almost nothing. Um, unfortunately, it was sitting right behind his his um, ocular nerves and stuff like that. So, they there was there were sections of it that they could not get without damaging his eye, and him losing his eye. And they they were like you know, they they basically they said they didn't want to do that because it was also like close to his brain and everything, and they didn't want to give him brain damage. So between those things. But uh, it, it remained gone because I think it, it, the tumor shrunk within about two months of the treatments and it remained gone for a good six to eight months um, before it started growing again and, and getting worse. And, and, it, and it came back um, pretty aggressively. And then it got into his lymph nodes um, and, and those swell, 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 swelled up. <laughs> And, uh, and that's when it was, we kind of knew it was time. I mean, I could have dumped 
another forty, fifty thousand dollars <laughs> into treatments for him, and they could have done some surgeries, and they could have done more treatments and things. But um, it was one of those where it had started getting into other systems um, and things, and it was only a matter of time. It really was at that point, and um, decided that despite the fact that if he didn't have cancer, he was still pretty healthy. <laughs> other, other than that, um, and he was still in good spirits and everything, and he, he certainly was not in any pain or anything yet. But with how aggressive it was in his lymph nodes, it was about to cut off his, his windpipe. Um, and so we knew that, that, you know, obviously at that point he would be suffering. And so that's when I decided to, to do it in home euthanasia before he had to suffer. Um, I mean, obviously his head was heavier uh, because of all the cancer and the tumors and everything. But in general, um, you know, that, that was my main concern was making sure that he didn't suffer. Um, and to give him as good of a life as possible in the last months to a year that he had left. Um, and I feel that, that that was accomplished, you know. It was, it was sad to let him go um, and still miss him. He was the first uh, dog that I'd ever had. Uh, my husband had had a, uh, a dog when he was a child. Actually, he had, had a couple of dogs. And he still missed both of those terribly. But... Um, you know, we, we decided we needed a dog for ourselves and everything, and, and primarily for his mental health. He, he suffered a lot of mental health issues, and having a dog was, you know, a way of, you know, giving him a distraction and lifting his spirits and everything. And so that was the main impetus for us adopting uh, Joey in the first place. Um, and then a year later, we got Lexi, who I still have, um, his sister. Uh, they were actually litter mates and stuff, and there's a long story behind all that. Um, but yes, I still have Lexi, and, and now there's Bailey, who decided he's going to join me <laughs> a little bit. Uh, so yes, uh, I, I introduced Bailey in a video uh, um, a few weeks ago, so you could uh, look at that. Or a few weeks ago, a few months ago. Yeah, I adopted him back in February, and I, I think I made a little introduction of him um, on a video um, a while ago. But yeah, uh, still have him. He's... Uh, year and a half old now and uh, doing doing really well uh, when I first got him he was 10 to 11 months old or, or so uh, they weren't quite sure but they they, they guessed he was uh, definitely over nine months old because he uh, had his um, full teeth and everything um, anyway so he hadn't been fixed yet um, which to me was a bit unusual that most uh, most places in Colorado will fix a pup uh, if they're over two months old. And uh, and he was getting close to a year old and hadn't been fixed yet. So obviously that's something I had done was, was, was he was fixed. Um, and he wasn't um, housebroken at all. <laughs> I, 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 one of the reasons I wanted to adopt a dog that was um, slightly older, um, I was looking specifically for a dog that was around a year to two years old, was I really wanted one that was already housebroken, and he was not, <laughs> and that was a little bit of a challenge. Um, I'll, I'll admit, but I I wasn't about to uh, give up on him and and give him back or rehome him just because you know he was peeing in my carpet because you know that would be kind of a cruel thing to do. So you know, kind of kind of dealt with that. Um, it, it, it's 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 been. It's been a, 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 an interesting roller coaster. The biggest challenge, you know, there was the challenge of one, getting him to know that he needed to let me know that he needed to go um, so that I could let him outside or take him for a walk or whatnot, which uh, initially it just, he, it wasn't clicking with him. And so I did have him in doggy diapers for a little while uh, while we were trying to get used, because I was like, okay, initially we just need to get used to each other. He needs to get used to the new home and the new feeding schedule and the sleeping schedule and everything else and all of that was kind of distracting him from uh, learning how to hello, uh, learning how to, to go outside and, and go potty and realize that he needed to be outside to go potty um, so it was a it was an interesting little little struggle there but um, finally 
Uh, and and the, the 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 biggest barrier there was you know like I think he was in a home because he he lived um, down in New Mexico, and I think he came from a home that probably just opened up to a yard or something, and just had an, an, an open door, and so he could just kind of come and go as he pleased, um, because as long as and when I first got him it was still cold and snowy outside so obviously that wasn't an uh, an option here in Colorado, but. Um, Lost my train of thought there. Um, yeah, so so trying to you know so he was in he was in a puppy diaper for a while, and then once he got warm enough out, then it was like okay I can leave the door open now I'm I wasn't gonna leave the sliding door open but I have a, a dog door um, that's built literally into the wall of my house, and it has two flaps on it and I was struggling to get him to learn how to use the dog door as well that was a bit of an intimidation on him and so I was like okay. Trying to teach him the dog door and housebreaking him at the same time wasn't working. So I decided let's kind of, you know, go back to step one and let's kind of make it a little bit more basic. I took the flaps off initially um, and just kind of like, okay, get used to going in and out um, of the door uh, and things. And, and he would, he would uh, go through it as long as the flaps weren't there. Uh, but still hadn't quite figured out that outside is where to go potty. So we're still, we were still working on that a little bit. Um, I, I did a number of things. I had a, um, a special hormonal spray, um, or pheromo pheromonal spray, um, that you, that you spray to encourage, um, where to pee. And so I was spraying that in the backyard and like, and then bringing him out there and letting him sniff, sniff and smell and everything. And, giving him lots of praise every time he peed out in the yard. Um, so we kind of, through that, kind of got the idea of, okay, yes, I pee outside, okay. And we were able to get rid of the diaper. Um, however, the, uh, the, the poop uh, was a, a completely separate issue. We had to do that completely separately from the peeing. Because even though he was like, okay, if, if I'm doing the wet stuff, I need to go outside. If I'm doing the, the solid stuff, um, I'm just going to, like, squat wherever. <laughs> so I eventually figured out uh, a trick where I would grab, you know, like, I, I'd have a, a, a poop bag uh, from whenever I, I go walking with the dogs. Obviously, he would poop outside. Um, so I would take the poop bag and pick it up, and then I would take it out into the backyard, and I'd, I'd bring him with me, and I'd let him know that, hey, look, this is your poop, and I'm putting it in the grass. Um, and I kept repeating that. Um, and so I think eventually that kind of got his gears going, and like, oh, okay, my poop is outside, that's where I need to poop. Um, and so, for the most part, uh, I was gonna say, I, I, if you'd asked me last week, I would have said he's, you know, he's, he's figured this out completely, but uh, well, a couple of days ago, <laughs> we, we, we found some more <laughs> in the house, like he forgot. And so I went through the whole ritual again of, of the whole ceremony of picking up his poop and taking him outside and like here, you know, the, you know remember that this is where your poop goes, because I think he must have forgotten. Um, so, so we're still working on that one a little bit. Um, but once he started consistently um, using the bathroom outside in the yard most of the time, I'd say at this point about 98% of the time, uh, uh, that's when I started like, okay, let's put one flap on the door and then kind of training him with that one. Because it, it, like I said, it has two flaps. And so I was like, okay, let's get him used to one flap. So, it took me a while to figure out the right kind of treats to use. Um, apparently, rotisserie chicken is the, is, the, is the thing that he is, like, absolutely salivating over. To, to, he's, he is very tricky with, with food because while he'll eat, I mean, there's no problem with him eating, but he's not very food motivated, which is unusual for a dog. Um... And there's certain, like, there's, there's certain treats he, you know, like, you know, if you want to treat him, he, he just sniff it and like, eh, whatever, and he walks off and goes and does something else. Like, he, he literally doesn't want the treat sometimes. Um, and, and Lexi is like, I'll take it. <laughs> because she, Lexi is, is the exact opposite. She's very food motivated and anything, any, anything and everything that she can get her little teeth on, uh, little, but uh, she's a, 
She's she's uh, 40 pounds versus his 10 pounds, so you know she's she's not as little as he is. Um, but yeah, she's she is very food motivated, and um, all I have to tell her uh, when we go out for a walk is like, if you pull the leash too hard, you're not going to get your treat when we get home, and you know you better believe it. She's 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 right by my side the whole time. Like I want that treat. I want that treat. <laughs> so she's 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 was really easy to train because she was she, she and, and Joey both were um, ridiculously intelligent dogs but like you can literally talk to them and you can tell that they understand the basic concept of what you're talking about in terms of like if you if you bark if you woof uh, I, I, I say woof instead of bark um, if you woof you know if you if you pull your leash, if you know what, then then you're not getting any chicken or you know that kind of thing, and that usually results in their behavior being you know better. Uh, if I forget to have that conversation with them, um, then they'd be a little bit more all over the place and like, well, they didn't you know didn't dad didn't say that that there's a treat, so I'm gonna go try and chase that bunny. <laughs> So, and and with Bailey, it's been more of a challenge because, again, he is not very treat-motivated, but turns out rotisserie chicken is his weakness. <laughs> That's his Achilles heel. Um, and so, you know, putting him on the, on, the, on the other side of the flap of where he wants to be. So he likes being inside. He's not... Uh, he At first, for a long time, he wasn't very keen about being outside, so if he was outside, he wanted in. Uh, if he was inside, he was happy. So I would have to put him outside and then try to lure him in with treats. And it was the it was the rotisserie chicken that that finally did it for him. Like, oh, I want that. I really, really want that. Um, and we we started slow. I started giving him treats anytime he put his nose through the door. Um, and then eventually, like nose and a paw through the door. Uh, you know, it it took a little while. It it, it took. It took a few months <laughs> consistently of doing this, uh, but eventually he he got to a point where he was like, I really, really want that chicken, and he just kind of didn't even think about it. He just dove through the door, and I was like, well, see, I told you you could do it. <laughs> and once he was consistently going in and out through the one flap, I was like, okay, good. You know, then I, I, I kind of stopped treating him as much and, and just kind of let him go, and he started just kind of like, because he was used to kind of going outside um, most of the summer with the with the flaps off, so he started getting used to being outside. And he actually really liked sunbathing out on the deck and stuff. And so um, once the flap was up, he was like, "All right, well, I want to go outside." And so he, he so uh, and I kind of let it go at the one flap for a good month making sure he was used to going in and out and everything. And then just yesterday, I put the second flap up. And I was like, all right, let's make sure I have some rotisserie chicken. This is going to be a few more weeks because he's going to, you know, freak out again. And so, you know, I, I put the flap up. I um, had, you know, Lexi demonstrate, like, see the flaps are still working. There's just two of them now. And then, you know, like, one of the things I do is I, I initially I'll, like, pick them up and just kind of, like, help him through the flaps just to demonstrate how it works. Um, so I kind of did that, putting him outside, and then boom, he was inside. He was like, yeah, so what? <laughs> and I was expecting several weeks of training to get him used to the two flaps and didn't need it. So I gave him a, well, I gave him both a, 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 a big bowl of rotisserie chicken as a treat. Uh, they don't get that kind of stuff often, but um, it was, you know, I, it, it, it was worth the work of, of taking all the chicken off the bones and things. I, I never give them bones, so for anyone who's concerned, no no bones, no skin, etc., just the meat. Uh, dice it up nice and small, and and everything, and uh, they, they, they practically inhale this stuff. And things, and but I was I was so proud of him, um, and he's been zipping in and out of that door um, ever since, and I, I have both flaps up, so I'm I'm really really happy about this uh, because it's been uh, it, uh, it's been uh, well it's been since February 
since I've been able to, to really have the... Well, I mean, he was in diapers until June, until it was warm enough, May or June, and then there were no flaps on the doors for a long, for a long time because of that. I had a lot of flies in the house this summer because <laughs> I couldn't have the flaps up because I wanted to keep him from peeing in the house and I needed him to get used to not peeing and, you know, like, as long as the door was open and, yeah. Anyway, long story short, that was, uh, that was, that, that was my summer with, with Bailey. Um, went off on a tangent because of his visit here, so sorry about that. Um, anyway, yes, so it's been nine years since I launched the channel and I just wanted to kind of tip a hat to that. Um, anyway, I thank you so much for everyone who, who follows me. Um, oh yeah, I was kind of talking about like all the things that have changed in the nine years. So like, you know, had Joey, lost Joey. Uh, had a husband, lost a husband. Um, for most of you who follow me, you know that in 2016, uh, my husband passed away. He died by suicide. Um, as I mentioned, he had a lot of uh, mental health issues and things, and they got the best of him. And if you want to know more, look in my videos below. I, I have uh, I have at least a, a couple of videos that, that kind of dive into that a little bit. Um, and that's been almost five years now, because it'll be five years in January um, since I lost him. And uh, since, let's see, 2017 is when I came out as you know, a variety of queer, I think. It came out as demisexual first, and sapiosexual, and then I kind of talked about being genderqueer, and then kind of like, because I, I was still kind of figuring myself out in 2017, and it was like 2017, 2018, and I was going through therapy and stuff when, you know, that kind of made me come to the realization that I was actually trans. Um, and it was like mid-2018 when I started my transition. Um, after having been in therapy for almost a year and then taking my hormones and then in 2019 having a variety of surgeries and things and more surgeries than I was originally planning on having. <laughs> Most of them not related to uh, my transition at all. Um, I ended up having to have two separate um, surgeries for my hysterectomy, um, long story there. And then I had an emergency appendectomy um, I also had thyroid surgery before the hysterectomy, and then finally I had my top surgery. And then I'm I'm I am done with surgery. If if you're uh, the nosy sort, uh, no, I'm not having bottom surgery. I'm not having the surgery. Uh, and there's actually a number of different varieties of those kinds of things. Um, and I'm not having any of those. i have like you know I don't I, at my age, um, not interested in it. Don't need it don't want it, so not having it. Um, if I am, you know, in, in, if you're a transphobe and, and you want to say you're not a man because you don't have a penis, like, you know what? Fuck yourself. That's my, <laughs> that's my reaction to anyone who is going to hate on me because, oh, you're still just a woman. Uh, I've, I've had a few people say, you're just a straight woman. I'm like, whatever you know like I, I don't have the the time or energy to, to 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 really go after that because like you know when I'm out in the world today you can hear my voice you can see I don't have any breasts and things and I've I'm, I'm starting to get the, the the facial hair coming in nicely I'm pretty happy with that um, people look at me and if you don't know me and you didn't know who I was before you probably wouldn't um, see me as a woman. Um, I, at least I hope not. I mean, I, and most people that I that I encounter, if I do go out grocery shopping and that kind of thing, will refer to me as sir, and they don't know that I wasn't a sir, you know, three, four years ago. Um, or wouldn't have been viewed as one anyway at the time. So, um, people just like to... to to try and, 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 and get to me and stuff. And you know what? I don't care. You know, um, it will offend and it will hurt um, some trans people because, um, you know, like everyone else, some trans people have 
more mental health issues. And it, it being trans in and of itself isn't a mental health issue. It's just that some people have depression and anxiety in addition to being trans. Just like some people have depression and anxiety in addition to being a cisgender straight person. Because, you know, these things all exist and they don't necessarily go together. Uh, there's no specific correlation. I mean, my husband was a cisgender straight man. Well, he was he he was he was kind of bi, um, although he was he was more into uh, um, at least he would say he was more into the the feminine um, than he was in the masculine. There's a lot of complicated stuff behind that, um, but that had nothing to do with the fact that he also had severe depression and, and anxiety and stuff, so that's a whole nother ball of wax. But, anyhow, um, I think this video is probably more than long enough. Uh, enough rambling for me today. Thanks for joining me. And, uh, um, thinking, uh, debating about maybe doing Vlogmas this year, I don't know. I, maybe I'll do like a every other day, uh, maybe, every, I don't know. Uh, if you if you liked me doing vlogmas, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, um, you know it depends on on how I feel about it this year. But until the next time I film a video, <laughs> take care. Bye bye.